So let's get into it. Um, how do I look? It's okay. Oh, there's a plant in my ear. Welcome back to another AI use case roundup. This week, we're gonna be focusing on a Chinese model that presumably is on Claude's level when it comes to building things, but it's fully openly available. We'll also be following up on ChatGPT's agents release from last week and the Grok release from a few weeks ago, giving you kind of a follow-up review to those really significant releases and much more in this week's episode of AI News You Can Use, the show that rounds up all the AI news stories, filters for the ones that you can actually use today, and then me and the team do our very best to show you practical examples or comparisons to other models. And then hopefully you add some of these to your tool belt or at the very least feel inspired to do whatever you do best. Let's begin. Okay, so we need to talk about this release. It's a Chinese model from Alibaba called Quen Free Coder. This is a highly specialized model for development output. And without over explaining, let me just tell you that this thing basically matches the best closed source models in the game, like Claude 4, Sonnet and Opus at its coding ability. But this is open, meaning you could download and run it locally, but it's so damn big that you would need a rig that costs tens of thousands of dollars to even do that at a very slow speed. So realistically, you can use it through their website where it's freely available without logging in, chats.quen.ai. Again, this is a Chinese model running on servers located in Singapore. And the second way is you can access it for the API from various providers. And one interesting addition to this release besides, hey, there's a new Chinese model that's open and really good, is the fact that they released their own command line agent tool with it. So you might be familiar with Claude Code that started this whole product category. Then a few weeks ago, we covered Gemini CLI agent, which they fully open sourced. And now Quen took that and adjusted it from a Gemini agent to a Quen free coder agent. Now look, I'm not going to be reintroducing you to this category, but if you're following the space, you might be aware that these CLI agents have kind of taken over the development space. And at this point, they're essentially synonymous with the word vibe coding. And by the way, fun fact, if you checked out the AI Advantage site recently, you might have noticed that it got a complete overhaul. I coded the entire thing from the ground up with Claude code only. It's hosted on Vercel. I used nothing else and I didn't edit a single line of code. Everything on the site is vibe coded and it works really well. So let me tell you, these tools are powerful and you can do way more than that, but it's a good example. Anyway, back to this model. So some of the details of how they trained it are actually really interesting, but we're not gonna go into that because this is about the use cases and how you can use this thing to your advantage. If you care about those, I do recommend the Fireship video that was just released on this model. He talks about some of the peculiarities of the training, but here's what matters. I ran the same test prompt that I tried with Gemini's agent and Claude code. This test prompt just lets it build a little Pomodoro timer which is simple, but it has dynamic elements so we can really see how this performs on a simple interface. And I have to say, even from this simple little example, I was already impressed because all of the design elements, except maybe the padding here, are fantastic. The timer arguably works better than the Claude one because you immediately see some progress. And as opposed to Gemini, this thing actually looks good. And it even came up with this extra feature that is not functional yet with work break that it added on top. So I can already tell you from looking at this one prompt that this is something I would call a proactive model. And some of the best coding models are. That's what's really good about Claude models. You tell them you want A and B and it kind of figures, hey, if he wants A and B, he'll probably want C too. And it just does that for you. Sometimes it's a bit over motivated, but when I build things with these tools, I personally would rather have it be a bit more proactive than under delivering because you can always read it back. And this model seems to do that. People all over the internet are hyping it up and really happy with this. And this is not just for developers. I really wanna stress the point that an openly available model like this that produces this level of quote quality is massive for this entire space because a bulk of the apps we've been getting recently are AI building apps. And they were always powered by Claude Sonnet 4 or Claude Opus 4. Now developers have an option to take this, fine tune it to their liking and self-host these models or just get fast the results as these models are half the size. I can also see some larger companies running these internally to guarantee privacy. So usually I kind of brush over these new model releases, but I think this one is really significant because we didn't have anything for code generation at the quality level of the Claude models yet. And I personally can't wait to see what builders create with these open models. It will take a little bit of time. And for you as a consumer, probably the most significant thing is this chat where you can just use it for free when building something. 
But I think for the AI space as a whole, this is gonna have real implications very soon. All right, so next up, I wanna show you one of the easiest and most powerful ways to build AI agents without much experience. And that is with a platform we've featured many times before, Make. And to do that, I wanna take a minute to show you their AI agents and the new Make grid. Because I'm generally loving the way they're going with the smart automations. And yes, this segment is sponsored by Make, but this is such a perfect partnership because me and the team actually use Make in our company and to teach all the time. And I likely would have shown you these updates even if they didn't reach out. So first up, let me show you Make's AI agents. What they do is make your automations intelligent. Make's AI agents can adjust workflows instead of just relying on fixed rules like a traditional automation. So if you use an agent in your flow, it turns a static workflow into a dynamic one with the AI adjusting things as it sees fit and you giving directions whenever you need. But hold up, how do you actually know if something goes wrong and if your input is needed? Well, that's where Make's new grid comes into play. Make grid gives you entirely new ways to view and interact with your automations. You get a real-time interactive overview of your automations where you can see how everything connects. You can see where the data flows, quickly identify performance bottlenecks, and even do troubleshooting all in one place. And honestly, this is such a great way of managing the complexity of modern automations because usually all of these things are in different places and to maintain the automations, especially with AI in the middle, you need this info for you to get them working smoothly. It's perfect for monitoring a brand new AI agent, which you just activated. We're actually already preparing a video that is going to show you makes AI agents and grid more in depth. So keep your eyes out for that for a full workflow breakdown. And if you want to start building your very own automations, sign up to make today using the link at the top of the description. New users will receive one month for free on the pro plan, which includes 10,000 operations per month amongst other perks. All right, now on to the next piece of AI news that you can use. So for the next one, we'll be needing headphones because this is a brand new voice model out of Hume called EVI Free. And what this specializes in is emotive voices. So let's actually go in here and clone my very own voice. 30 to 90 seconds of audio up to 30 Mbits. So I just have a little audio clip of me presenting a YouTube video that I'm gonna upload to this and we're gonna be comparing it to what I would consider the best in class app at this, which is 11 Labs, where I have a custom trained voice. Now mind you, this took over an hour of audio and took like a full day to process. So it's not exactly apples to apples, but I still hey wanna there. try. Uh, yeah, hello. What's on your mind today? Oh, is this me? Am I talking to myself? So anyway, I was just thinking about how crazy it is that we're still in this phase where everyone's talking about AI taking over everything. But like there hey, are still these- Hey, hold up, these... hold up, hold up, brother. You kind of sound like me, but not entirely. What's up with that? Huh? Me sound like you? That's, that's interesting. Look, I don't really know what to tell you about that. I mean, maybe we just have similar ways of that's thinking kind of or something different. Okay, so let's see what, what happens when I switch to podcast host. Hey, hey, welcome to Radio Hume. I'm EV3. Just, uh, just okay. started up. What about, uh, live coach? So these are obviously different voices. Hey there, welcome. So glad you could make it today. Hello, uh welcome to you too. Good to have you here. Oh, that's so sweet of you to say. <laughs> I'm really excited too. Who are you? Where do you come from? Where's this accent from? Oh, right. Good question. So I'm EV3 and I come from a place of... Well, let's just say a lot of positive energy and big ideas. My <laughs> I, accent, hmm, it's a mix of things. Yeah, I don't know. That sounded Northern European. Okay, so that was okay, not great. I mean, I can immediately tell you that if I do the same thing with something like 11 Labs, but again, it's not apples to apples. And then when I enhance this with these new features that make it more emotional. Hey there, what is on your mind? What? To be honest, that doesn't sound like me either. So I think I might have to switch this back to the V2 model for it to sound more similar. Hey there, what is on your mind? That's better, but I have to say in many cases, this used to work better. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Okay, so there you go. Definitely a stronger model, but emotive voices are really getting there. We're seeing new releases regularly. And yeah, Hume always seems to deliver. So next up, we have a really fun one. And I want to comment on the fact that we were actually sponsored by this company recently, but this video is absolutely not sponsored by them. We're just featuring this because we generally think this is really cool. And I think you'll see why in a second. Second. This thing is called Mirage, and I suppose this could be referred to as a new product category in AI. LSD standing for Live Stream Diffusion. Not... And the team has told me that I just absolutely have to live test this because this is just too fun. There is a little cue here, so I'll just wait through that. And then what should happen is it should take my camera input and we can transform it 
live. And I think you get like 10 minutes for free. So let's just start the experience and see what it's got. Yep, it's got the cam, model is warming up. Oh, whew. Oh my God, me putting on the, okay, okay, wait. What else we got? A relaxing anime, sunkissed. Oh, I'm not sure if this is sunkissed or sunburned. What about zombies? Whoa. Okay, let me take off the headphones. Man, what if I only recorded videos like this from here on out? <laughs> That's kind of amazing. What about this one? Colored manga, cabin core. Jesus. Okay, wait, wait. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I need to find a good one here. None of these look like me, but that's not the point, yeah? Cold AF. What happens if I take my little water bottle here and take a sip? That's a weird water bottle. Holy moly. Okay, Dubai skyline. Pwah! Look at me. I look like a crypto influencer or something. Okay, I have a little book here. Let me open that up. Pwah! That is pretty insane. This is actually kind of sick. What about the moon landing? Okay, headphones again. Whoa, gold digger. What is that about? Oh, hello. Okay, and why does my seat have a face? Not anymore. I mean, this is just fun. Oh, cigar lounge. Actually, this is what I kind of feel like when I'm presenting these videos. I mean, maybe not looks wise, but this is the vibe I like. It's welcome to another episode of AI News. You can use. In today's video, we'll be covering live stream diffusion and more. So yeah, I mean, what a fun product, no? And I love that sometimes these companies just like reach out to us and want to showcase their applications that, <laughs> hey, we would be showcasing anyway. I mean, this is incredible. So yeah, if you want, you can go try this for yourself. And honestly, this is a really fun one to try. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like. It really helps the channel out. And now let's get back to the next piece of AI news that you can use. Next up, I want to talk about ChatGPT Agent and also Grok4, two biggest releases of the last month and how I'm kind of using them, my team is using them, what we're seeing in the community and what kind of use cases really matter. So let me start by Grok because that one is rather simple. The model is really impressive. If you do side by side comparisons with some of the other leading models, it objectively does a little better sometimes. And I've been doing that for the first week or two, but now I'm at a point where I've fully switched back to a combination of ChatGPT and Claude because that slightly better answer is not worth all the compromises. So the model is really good, but I personally have switched back and I've spoken to many other people, many other power users of all these tools and they found themselves in the same spot. Now, again, the model is incredible, but there's a little bit of a platform lock-in with the most popular LLM platform that most people are experiencing. So now let's talk about ChatGPT Agent, which has been integrated into ChatGPT. At this point has been rolled out to all European users and by the end of this week, so that's something like the 27th of July, even all plus users will have access to this. Now, I've been playing with this a whole lot more over the last week, and I stand by what I said last week. It performs better than any product in this category that we've seen before. In some cases, marginally, and some significantly better. And this product category is really, really promising. I mean, an agent using your computer and doing online tasks, that just sounds like the utopia that a lot of us want to live in. But it's slow, and it can still not do many things that you would want it to do. Now, this video is here to show you what you can do, but sometimes also includes pointing out things that you cannot do. And what this can do really well is one, research topics and put them into Excel sheets and two, research topics and put them into PowerPoint presentations. These are the two use case categories that I personally and my team have found to be the most useful and consistently deliver usable results. For example, I took this prompt that friend of the channel, Matt Wolf shared recently and I ran this. We've been testing variations of this on various social media channels. But here for my YouTube channel, this worked exceptionally well. I told it to analyze videos over the past three months, put all the data into a spreadsheet and then to run some analysis analysis on top of it, recommending further videos. Things like this work exceptionally well. Look, it mapped out all the videos. It came up with a category system for the videos. It added notes and it created a pie chart for all of it with useful commentary that I didn't even ask for. It gave me strategic recommendations. It gave me actually more than 10 data driven video ideas, many of which I actually really like. And this sheet is fantastic and accurate. Putting this together myself would have probably took me something like 16 minutes. But in this case, all I needed to do is customize this prompt. So if you have similar tasks where it includes researching something, then analyzing it, putting it into a sheet, I strongly recommend you test out Agent. Same thing goes for slideshow use cases. There's this video from OpenAI showing how it pulls together pictures and creates a first draft of a slideshow. Now, here's the thing. If I'm creating slideshows, I'm already using AI. Something like Gamma to create presentations 
functions is just powerful. I've been using that for over a year, but this can automate some of that process. And I continue to experiment. Sometimes I have these to-do list items that could use a little bit of prep and research and creating an Excel sheet like this. I'm trying to think of agent and trying to integrate it into my workflows, but it's not at this point where it's just an end-to-end -end solution for some of your tasks. Again, some of the best use cases I've found are research and analysis, not execution. And I just thought that was important to point out. If you want more use cases for the agent, please share them in a comment below. Not just me, but the entire community watching this video would surely love to see those. And at the end of the day, as I always say, the best use cases are always personal to you. They're always individual, just like you are. Okay, next up, let's cover all the quick hits of this week, starting out with Claude Artifacts on mobile. If you still haven't given this feature a shot, this is one of the funnest things I've done in AI over the past few months, and it's available for mobile now. You can just build these preset applications. It works on the free plan. You can do it on the go, show other people. Really great interface with fantastic models, obviously. Next up, it's not really a use case, but something you should know about other people using AI. So OpenAI model won the gold medal at an international mathematical Olympiad. And this is actually a really interesting story because Google also achieved gold medal level performance. And if you want to learn more about these, I would highly recommend AI Explains video on this where he deep dives into these results. We also recommended this as the video of the week on our weekly newsletter if you haven't checked that out. Link is in the description. And then lastly, there has been a silent but significant update to anybody who's using GPTs in ChatGPT, like myself and many community members of ours are still using these regularly. They're powerful tools that were sort of abandoned over time, but now OpenAI is catching up and actually equipping them with features like the brand new model picker. Yes, you can pick the model that the GPT user will be using. So if you have some basic prompt and context engineering skills, you can set up a GPT for a colleague, pre-pick the model, Model for him, set up the prompts, set up the starting messages, attach relevant documents, and they get a smooth yet powerful experience where you set it up exactly the way it's supposed to be set up. They didn't tweet about this, they didn't mention this, but now you know. So go ahead and update your GPTs if you have any. And that's pretty much everything I got for this week. I hope you found something that was useful or interesting to you. It's good to be back home in the studio. I have to say the last months were super busy. I was juggling a lot of things at the same time. And the one thing I wish I did a bit more of is tutorials on this YouTube. So moving forward, August, September, you can expect a few more tutorials, practical workflows for free on here. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of those with you. And with that being said, my name is Igor, and I will see you very soon.